My name is Ruben Lenton, professional extreme big air kiteboarder. And I'm Aaron Hadlow, five times kiteboarding world champion. We are on a mission to push the limits of kiteboarding once again. Traveling the world to ride the best spots. Checking out the sickest events. And having an epic time along the way. The adventure continues. We are on the loose. So I grew up in a small beach town, about 20 minute drive down south from Amsterdam. And uh, yeah, I loved growing up there. It's had all the conditions I've ever wished for. Like it's always different. Sometimes the sea is flat. Sometimes there are some nice waves. Wind from the left, wind from the right, strong light. We've got it all. So I think that's shaping us into very all round kiters. So now throughout my injury, I've been able to ease back into it with a few fun sessions. Uh, also did some foiling getting into that side a little bit and uh, yeah, just enjoying some, some days at home. Also in Nordwijk we have uh, Kite Mana. It's uh, yeah, one of the world's best kiteboarding shops, always making sure that everybody has the right gear around the world. So yeah, it's, uh, it's great to do downwinders with them and have a good time. A very uh, fun coincidence is that uh, Aaron actually moved to Nordwijk as well, uh, my hometown. He moved from England to come uh, spend a few yeah, months in the Netherlands and going on some nice trips and uh, yeah, evolving the business and our careers together again. It just uh, feels great. I saw Ruben like on the first time when I was, yeah, we, I think we were 13, 14 maybe. And my first experience of him is like pulling this kite loop in like, I think it was 2003 or two. And just the kite hitting the water before him and then a huge crash and bam. So things haven't really changed <laughs> so many years on. Um, but yeah, it's been pretty like crazy. I mean, I've had a couple of injuries, but like the setbacks that Ruben's gone through over his career have just been absolutely insane. And the last one was, uh, yeah, just so devastating just because of the, the time in and he was just back on the water and getting his confidence back. And then to have something like so destructive happen, for him just to even ride again and, and get to where he wants to be, it's been, it's tough to see, but like also incredible strength. And uh, now he's finally back and it's good fun. So another epic opportunity that came out of me shattering my ankle and getting more implants in my ankle has been getting a phone call from Stryker, one of the biggest medical companies in the world uh, with over 40,000 employees dedicated to making healthcare better. They rang me up, they were like, hey Ruben, our products are inside your ankle. Uh, would you be open to doing a, a patient story at our sales meeting? Before I knew it, I was doing a, a talk in front of 2,500 people uh, live in Barcelona and another 30,000 on the live stream. So that was pretty nerve wracking. I think that was one of the most nervous things I've ever done, but uh, I rocked it and uh, yeah, got a lot of uh, yeah, very wordy connections and feedback out of that. And uh, I think it was awesome. Since then, Striker has been yeah, supporting me to yeah, rebuild my life basically and get back onto my feet, get back into my career. And uh, it's been lovely being an ambassador for them. And also together with Aaron, I went off to Kiel, Germany, to host a, a clinic for the striker team. And it's been great just yeah, showing them what kiteboarding is all about. 
Some employees were already kiting and some had to begin, but we had an epic event. We are at Stryker headquarters in Kiel. It's uh, one of the production facilities Stryker has. The only one in the world where they actually build the nails, like the nails, the implants that go into the body, into the bone. And uh, yeah, we just had a tour and it's been absolutely mind blowing. I mean, creating products that actually rebuild lives, you know. Right now I'm a little bit nervous <laughs> because uh, yeah, I have to do uh, a talk uh, at their town hall uh, sales meeting. And uh, yeah, it's uh, always interesting, you know, preparing for a talk and talking about your own story. Everything you need is inside of you, but you still start stressing about it a little bit. And I get quite nervous, but uh, I think we're gonna rock it. So yeah, it gives me goosebumps because I never thought I would be back on my kiteboard after such a break and now I'm just back at it, so... I'll... Yeah, I think everybody enjoyed it. I was able to share my story and some wise lessons. And now we're off to the beach to actually take the employees of Stryker out guiding. That was the whole goal of this, to make them experience the freedom this sport has to offer. So let's go. Long lost soul traveling all around this world. Got seven different children, from seven different girls I've known about love. For a long, long time. Well, I laid some roots down in Tennessee. I thought nobody there would bother me, but I was wrong. I was wrong. Shot a man who pissed me off, then ran out of town. And the sun came. It was amazing. She flew in the air. Troubles and desperate smiles. And I'm calling you up to say So easing back into my kiting was uh, a bit harder than I expected. Uh, there was a nice storm on the forecast, so I grabbed my gear and I went kiting at Imuiden, uh, one of the infamous storm chase uh, spots in the Netherlands as well. So I went out there and I was expecting yeah, to pull the first loops again, but the wind was quite strong and I was feeling quite out of sync with, yeah, with my ankle not being 100% fit. And I was actually uh, pretty disappointed that session and very emotional. Uh, because I felt a lot of fear and yeah, out of place whilst riding a storm was my happy place and I was totally in my element, but not this session. Like I was scared to pull even a loop and uh, I had a few nice jumps, nice floaty, just easing back into it. But uh, yeah, I definitely have a, a lot more fear now because the last thing I want is to spend more time in the hospital or to get injured. I just want to take care of my family and enjoy this sport to the max. I, I'm not going to change the sport anymore. I'll leave that up to the next generation. So I pick my battles and pick my goals uh, differently for sure. The sport now is is crazy in all disciplines. You know, the levels being pushed in every direction, and um, the big air side of things is like the latest craze for sure. And now there's yeah, people are taking board off rotations with mega loops and double kite loops, uh, S loops, like everything's coming out the bag now and people are just putting it on the line. And it's nice to see that finally happen because Big Air is such a spectacle and if it's done with uh, yeah, power and it's extreme and it, it looks cool and it just ticks all the boxes and yeah, hopefully everyone <laughs> stays safe, but uh, it's definitely getting uh, more risky as time goes on. Storm chase is on. We see 62 knots on the forecast for the north of Denmark, and they gave the green light for the cold Hawaii Big Air Games. Aaron is going to be competing. I'm going to be checking it out, maybe playing a few tunes, and uh, probably go for a Big Air session myself. So uh, it's going to be an exciting contest. Let's go! We're looking at a serious forecast tomorrow. We have two jet skis, one boat. Six guys on the beach. Yeah. yeah. 
now. But they have experience in conditions we're gonna yeah, get. Yeah, they're from, they're from this, yes. Well, yeah. try and find them. There's no yeah. better experience guys. 60 knots on the water. There's not many, yeah? yeah, yeah. In terms of what we have in Denmark, it's the best guys. Okay, yeah. It's the guys who train all the other guys. I hope you all play it safe, play it wise, and uh, be a gentleman out there. And It's all about the stoke, and uh, thanks for putting this on. I'm very excited. <laughs> We're gonna be okay. Strong. That's all we need. It's good for me. Yeah, good for him. I've been on the world tour since like 2003, pretty much. So yeah, coming up to 20 years of uh, solid competing. Yeah, it's a good motivation for me. It's something I don't really want to lose. And yeah, it's obvious in all sports as you get older and new kids and new generations come through. It's just, uh, it's part of the game, part of the sport. Just recently we've been trying to unhook past the bar. Definitely my body wasn't, isn't what it used to be and a little bit more brittle and you need to learn to manage that, but uh, yeah, I think I've learned to manage it in the right way and I still look at people in other sports that are still going. People like Ronaldo and, you know, Kelly Slater, they're still top of their game at, at their age and let's see where it goes. <laughs> It's a different game when you get a bit older and like I think your experiences and you know it's not that the hunger dies down but like you have to to, to manage your way through your career in a different different way. You use really a lot of experience especially competing like you know there's guys that are younger and, and sending it probably harder and just going for these crazy things but you can always uh, do well in with heat management and, and experience and there's definitely a level to that that I'm able to use. So yeah, approaching things um, in different ways. And yeah, like goals and expectations, of course you have to be more realistic with the sport nowadays. You know, I've come from a time when I was really dominant and to, there was a real focus on freestyle and there was a certain amount of people doing that. Now the sport's so much bigger, it's way more competitive in every aspect. And that means, you know, you have to focus on one discipline almost. And I've always loved to do lots of different things. And uh, even when you focus in on one, like Big Air or something, you just see the level improving, you know, week after week here, here in Cape Town especially. And um, yeah, it's just, it's crazy to see, but yeah, you gotta be in the game, be a part of it. And yeah, I stay motivated by my, my own progression and, you know, being able to, to work within in the company and, and do different, different things uh, on the side. Yeah, On Loose has been, away for a while and we've always talked about oh we've got to do it again like over the last however many years that we haven't done it and uh yeah like times have changed and we just want to you know our goal is to have fun together travel the world we want to do the same things and and have fun along the way and it's a perfect like platform and way to do it so we in the end we decided let's bring it back let's see how it goes and so far so good Bring
the room. 